In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a fully structured mesh for an axisymmetric geometry such as this. Uh, the topology that I'm going to use is an OH topology. It's going to be five blocks. It's also known as a butterfly topology. And the way that I'm going to create it is via extrusion, a, a rotational extrusion. So to start, I'm going to grab my geometry and I'm just going to put some grid curves on it and then turn off the view of the geometry itself. Now, what I want to do is I want to create just a 2D domain and then I can revolve it to create the block. So one of the things I need to do is kind of get a center point and an axis. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch a couple of connectors here. Then I'm going to go ahead and select the connectors and split them at 50%. So here's the second one. I'll split that at 50% as well. And then I will sketch my axis. And these are all grid curves. Now I'm just going to grab the connectors that I need and use control T to toggle my selection and just delete all the others. I just grabbed that database and put connectors on it just so I could quickly get uh, my grid curves. I could have easily sketched those on the geometry, but this was a much quicker way of getting the curves that I needed. All right, so now I'll just reorient and we'll take a look at our 2D geometry. Now, I'm gonna create a structured domain for this. It's pretty simple. Once I do that, I'm gonna distribute everything properly and then we'll do the revolve operation. So I'm just gonna grab all of the connectors and then give them 61 points each. Now the bottom connector isn't split in the middle, so it's gonna actually need 121 points because each of the opposing connectors has 61 points and 61 and 61 plus the shared node is gonna be 121. So now everything is distributed properly. I can just grab all of the connectors and click assemble domains to get my structured domain. All right, what I need to do now is adjust the spacing so I can achieve some boundary layer resolution off of the surface. And this upper, uh, these upper two connectors represent the surface of our axisymmetric geometry. So what I'll do is grab the spacings mask and grab these spacing constraints and type in my boundary layer spacing to cluster points. Now, if I want a little bit more control, I can actually grab those connectors, those two connectors, and I can go to grid distribute, go to the functions tab, and I can change those to a growth type distribution and take a look at those parameters. I can specify how many layers I want. In this case, let's say I want 21 layers at a growth rate of 1.2, and I can go ahead and accept that. And now my boundary layer was specified explicitly. I've got my initial spacing, I've got my growth rate, and I've got my number of layers, right? So I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out. Now, one thing I wanna do is, you know, this structured domain was initialized using transfinite interpolation. So the grid lines emanating away from the boundaries aren't necessarily normal to those boundaries. They're not orthogonal. And I can zoom in here and take a look. You can see that they're not exactly orthogonal. So I'm gonna actually run this through our elliptic solver to enforce orthogonality at the boundary. So I'll grab the domain and go to grid solve, go to the edge attributes tab, and I'm going to start by selecting the top two curves and or the top two edges or boundaries, if you will, and change the boundary control function to Steger Sorensen. So the default is von Levante Hilgenstock white, and that's going to really strictly enforce orthogonality and spacing. And in this case, it's one domain. It probably wouldn't be that bad to just leave it there, but if you switch to Steger Sorensen, it'll more loosely adhere to those, but it won't come at the cost of stability. So that's one of the things that you get if you use von Levante Hilgenstock White, is because it is strictly enforcing orthogonality and spacing, sometimes it comes at the cost of solver stability. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and switch that to Steger Sorensen. I'm gonna change, this is the most important part here actually, change spacing from interpolate to current grid we've specified the spacing that we want off of that boundary and we don't want it to change as the solver is running as it's smoothing this domain. So we need to specify that. So we're gonna change that to current grid. We could also change it to user specified and actually type in that initial spacing uh, that we wanna keep off the boundary. But because we've already done that, we've already set up the distribution, we're gonna set current grid, right? Everything else can remain the same. 
On the bottom, one of the things that we can do is actually change the boundary condition to orthogonal. And what that will do is it'll actually allow those points along that bottom boundary, which represent the axis of the geometry, to kind of slide along that boundary to achieve orthogonality. And that will allow those uh, grid lines to be more normal to the surface in a fewer number of iterations. And we don't have anything on the opposite side that would be affected. So it's, it's a good idea to go ahead and just change that. Again, we'll be able to achieve that orthogonal state in much fewer iterations by doing that. Everything else we can leave alone and we can go to grid or actually I need to select everything. I'm going to change everything, all of the boundary control function to Steger Sorensen. All right. So at that point, now we're, we're finished. We can go to the solve tab and we can go ahead and run this. We'll run it for 50 iterations. And you can see it's kind of smoothed that out. The bottom grid curves are, are normal to that boundary. And if we zoom in, to the boundary up here, you can see that those grid lines are also orthogonal to that boundary as well. Okay. All right. So we're happy with that. We can go ahead and accept it. And so now I have a 2D representation of our mesh. What we need to do now is just revolve it around an axis. So I'll go ahead and select that domain. I'm going to rotate it around here a little bit and go to create, extrude, rotate. I'm going to pick the connector that's at the axis that represents the axis of rotation. I'm going to specify 360 degrees as my angle, and then I'm going to rotate this 60 steps. Go ahead and run that and click OK. So now I actually have a 3D mesh. I'll change that to hidden line. We can see what we end up with. So I've got a block, a single block uh, created via that extrusion that represents, represents this. Now, in some cases, you may be done. If you zoom into the core, basically what we have here is a pole. It's a singularity. These are uh, quad elements or hexes in 3D that have a collapsed edge and or face. And some solvers may accept that if you're running an unstructured solver, these are going to go out as prism elements and tries on the surface. However, what we might want to do is just make this purely hexes and we can significantly improve the quality particularly in that core region if we just cut out that pole and then fill it with an H block. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. I will select this block and I'm just going to split it and I'm going to split it about right there in the J direction. Okay, So you can get a visualization of that cut. We'll go ahead and accept that and then I'm just going to take this core block and I'm going to use control delete. And by using control delete, it's also going to delete all of the connectors that are associated with that block. All right. So now I can go ahead and set that to hidden line. And this is what we end up with. Okay. Now what I want to do is fill that core with an H block. So to do that, we need four connectors, right? So we can create two domains to cap off the ends. And that's pretty easy to accomplish. We can just grab this block and let's just split it. We'll take a look down the axis of the block and we're going to split it in four locations. We'll go ahead and split this in the K direction. So you can see there's our, our cut and we'll split it in four locations or three locations to create four blocks. All right. So now I have four blocks, one, two, three, and four. And I can use those connectors at either end to create my cap domains. So we'll select these four connectors and rotate it around and select these four connectors. And I can create two structured domains. And you can see that's what we end up with, All right? Now, that looks pretty crummy here in the corner. You can see we've got really high included angles for those quads. So what we're actually going to do now is run the solver on the end domains, then build our block in the center and then run the solver one more time. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and select these domains on either end. And we're going to go to grid solve, go to edge attributes. Again, I'm going to change this to Steger Sorensen and spacing. Uh, what I need to do is select our boundary edges on both ends. And similarly to what we did for that uh, 2D cross-sectional grid. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to change spacing to current grid because we want to 
continue to achieve that initial spacing off of the wall. All right, so that's specified and we want to be orthogonal to the boundary. Then I'm just going to do a control A to select everything and change the boundary condition type to floating. And what that will do is any edge that's interior. So for example, you know, these edges that you can see being highlighted here with my mouse, uh, these edges here, basically any interior edges will be allowed to float just as if they were interior grid lines uh, in a domain. Okay. And that'll allow us to achieve a very uh, nice smooth mesh on both of these end caps. So I'll go ahead and run that, um, that solver for 10 iterations. Okay. And you can see the result of that. And much smoother, those quads in those corners uh, don't have as high of an included angle now at this point. All right. Okay, so now I'll build my center H block. So I'm going to select the domains on the inside. And then I'll select my two cap domains. So th those are my six domains and then click assemble blocks in the toolbar. Now I have my core block and then my four outer blocks. And this is again an OH topology or also known as a butterfly topology. So I've got my inner core and then the O grid around the outside. All right. So at this point, we're pretty close to done, but now what we need to do is run the solver on the blocks. So if we take a look at those blocks, let's just examine the maximum included angle and take a cut through the center. And you can see that we've got the same sort of thing happening on the interior where we've got these high included angles and some skewness. And what we can do is actually run the block solver to mitigate those issues. So with the block selected, I'm gonna to go to grid solve and I'm going to go to face attributes and same thing change that to Steger Sorensen I'm going to just while everything is selected set those to float and again any interior faces will be allowed to float in this case now we're talking faces of a block rather than edges of a domain so any interior faces will be allowed to float and now what I need to do is select my boundary faces okay so the four faces on the boundary of my geometry, right? And set the spacing controls to current grid, again, to achieve that target boundary layer spacing. And then I can go to the solve tab and run that for 10 iterations. Okay, and directly within the solve tab, I can come in and I can look at the maximum included angle and note that it's dropped down to 133 degrees and I can go ahead and take a cut and you can see what the cross section looks like. It's a lot smoother. I can sweep this cut plane through the block and you can see the result of that operation. All right, so we'll go ahead and click OK and accept that and we can turn on our domains again. And that's how you would go ahead and create a very high quality OH uh, structured grid for an axisymmetric geometry such as this.